Pat DeMarco joins us to get into the film room. Pat, another week, more awards for South Carolina. They are racking up the SEC Player of the Week awards this year. Three new names to add to the list. Uh, Rocket Sanders named Co-Offensive Player of the Week alongside Alabama's Jalen Milrow. And Torricelli Simpkins, he's back in the win column when it comes to the awards. He is alongside Alabama's Tyler Booker as Offensive Lineman of the Week. Freshman of the week, it goes to Lenora Sellers. So South Carolina keeps winning, and players keep getting recognized, and now the team is recognized. They're in the AP's top 25. And, Pat, we expect them to be tomorrow uh, in the college football playoff rankings. What's up, man? Not too much. No, it was, a, um, was another fun Saturday for the Garnet and Black. Um, played at a high level. I mean, crappy weather. That's, that's one of those games that's like you – don't expect for a letdown game, but coming off an AM game and then going to Vandy playing a team that is hype but necessarily not crazy talented um, in some in some shitty weather. Um, no, they came and answered the bell. And, um, you know, first half wasn't pretty, but the team kept fighting and was pretty persistent and, um, you know, ended up big win and, in, like you said, in the top 25. Pat, they have rushed for 500 yards in the last two games two defensive teams it's not like these are two bad defensive teams they're not yeah. they're good 500 yards on the ground pat yeah we are i mean rocket's playing extremely high level football this is rocket of 2022 that we're seeing right here i mean you see his top end you see his physicality one of these clips you'll we'll see him in a hole with the safety there as close as he can get to making the play and him almost making the guy not even touch him um, so, but also I, I think that, you know, the blocking up front's been, re been really, really well. Um, kudos to Lonnie Teasley and, and the trenches. Uh, those boys are playing high level football right now too. Um, also helps when your quarterback is an extension of the run game and Lenore has been doing a great job, um, you know, taking off when it's time to take off. He's doing a great job reading some of these RPOs, triple option stuff. Um, no, I mean, it also helps when you have a hell of a defense, and that's one thing the Gamecocks got this year. And, um, yeah, you know, it's, I don't think that's anything that anybody shies away from talking about. I mean, the defense is carrying this team. The offense is starting to catch up. Um, but playing complimentary football, I mean, as long as yeah. Carolina doesn't turn the ball over a bunch because um, we're forcing one or two takeaways a game at the minimum, um, it's this, this is a good football team that I don't think anybody, any of those 12 playoff teams that are – Sitting there right now, I don't think any of those teams want to see Carolina in a game. No, I don't either. I mean, it, and it has been complimentary football. I mean, the offense, how would you describe the offense now from an identity standpoint? What, what would you say they are? Um, I mean, we're like you said, we run for 500 yards over the last two games. I would say it's we're a run first team. Um, what I'm still seeing from the Norse is he's watching the pass rush a little bit. Okay. Um, and that was uh, pretty present last week uh, or sorry, this past game, but he's doing a good job of extending plays and, and kind of making off schedule plays. And that's kind of what you, when I mean, you look at the NFL, you look at some of these other models, like you, it's really hard for a defensive back to cover somebody for six, seven seconds. So uh, he's doing a really good job of extending plays, but also keeping his eyes downfield, not committing and taking off running right away. Um, but doing a good job of, and, and we'll get to a couple of them in these plays that you, that you, that you sent me. But, um, I mean, Lenore's is a beast. Like he is a freaking horse to bring down. I mean, there has been very present the last three weeks is one guy's not bringing him down. Even if it's your defensive tackle, defensive end, you, you got to rally the football. Um, and you know, he's done such a good job reading it and spitting it out and, He's developing um, like we like we thought he was going to, um, and he's got a bright bright future. Pat, there's no there's no way to say this as a compliment without sounding a little bit uh, taking away from the, another facet of the offense. But I look at the other receiving cores in this league. Like I was just in Oxford. Jesus Wells is not even a factor in that team, and they're without Trey Harris, who might be the best receiver in the SEC, and they still have, like, the Watkins kid who's transferred from Louisville. Nobody can cover him. They've, yep. got, they've got two or three other dudes. Uh, Georgia's got some dudes. D Tennessee, like, Lenoris hasn't been gifted that. Y and, and I say that 
from the point of you know it's going to get better. You know they're going to upgrade the receiving core next year, and some of these guys who are not quite level to be imp- not quite ready to be impact players yet uh, will be. So, with the exception of Simon, like I don't see a go-to guy in this no, core, I mean, and yet Lenoris is yeah, and, and yet still Lenoris is still making things work. So, my my bigger point to all that is next year as the game continues to slow down for Lenoris. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be scary. It could be scary good, right? I mean, we're not seeing even the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Right now, you're almost winning games in spite of the passing game, whereas next year it could be you could win some games because of the passing game. Yeah, I mean, and and it's something I've said on here a bunch, and and thankfully it hasn't been the case, but we even had a play from behind. Um, I would be really nervous if we got down – 14, 17 early. Um, I just don't see that position group being able to separate enough and create enough yeah. big plays besides off schedule plays to, you know, drive 80 yards down the field, completion after completion after completion after completion. Um, we are, I mean, we're a damn good football team, but we live and die with explosive plays and we're making them. Um, and, and that's that's a lot of teams across the NFL and in college football's explosive plays. I mean, that was one of the five key factors when I was in Atlanta and Buffalo was win the explosive play battle. Um, and we've done that. Win the turnover battle. We've done that. Um, you know, average four plus yards of carry. We've done that. So um, win the field position battle. Like th- those, like all the thing, all the recipes to win football games. We are executing on. Um, and like you said, I mean, if you if we can polish up and these guys continue to develop under Mike Fury, Mike Fury's doing an incredible job recruiting too. Um, and I would imagine he's going to be portal shopping um, here for some other studs. So, um, I mean, it is scary how good this team can be. I mean, losing Rocket next year is going to be a tough one to fail because he's coming in and, I mean, he's going to be a thousand-yard rusher easy this year. Um, so, no, it's – I mean, this team has a lot of promise. Um, you know, I – like we said after, oh, uh, who was after? Was it Alabama or Oklahoma? Was the game before the bye week? Uh, yeah, yeah. Man, like we said after we beat Oklahoma, we're sitting there. We're like, I don't see it being a issue winning out. I mean, we have to play good football, but I mean, we all knew it was on the table. Um, so I'm just glad that you know they're they're playing hard, they're playing physical, um, they're playing the game cock way that. Um, you know, that the guys, the teams that I played with before and after me, um, they're playing that way and, and they're, and they're playing with an edge and they're playing with a swagger and, um, you know, coach Beamer knows, know what it is. Um, he's, he's been around it. He's been with a lot of winning programs. So, uh, excited. We got the Letterman's golf tournament coming up this weekend. <laughs> As somebody's coming in town. Um, we will be loud and proud of the game on Saturday. So no, we're, we're excited. Before we get into the film room here, I I do want to mention a name uh, that that has not been mentioned, uh, at least on our show today, and I owe this young man and his family an apology because I think that Oscar Attaway has played his rear end off uh, the last few weeks, coming in in spurt for uh, Lenore Sell or for uh, I'm sorry for Rocket Sanders, a kid who, who transferred in from North Texas to play his final season here. Um, at South Carolina, he, he's gotten into the end zone a couple of times. He's caught six or seven balls. Uh, I think he's run for almost 200 yards on the season, which is not a lot, a lot. But um, when he runs, he's he runs. Physical. He, yeah, he is, man. I mean, he's he's physical. Uh, he runs with passion. Uh, I've enjoyed watching this kid play. I think from time to time, his dad actually pops into our our chat box. I don't know if he's in there today or not, but. I've enjoyed watching that kid play. The backup running back doesn't always get a bunch of pub when you got a superstar, but when he's in the game, man, he's pushing for first downs and extra yards and well, continuing. You know, you know what's crazy is I, I'm, like the offense doesn't. I, I think the biggest um, takeaway from it is the offense doesn't change when they have to put him in there. They're still able to do all the stuff they do with Rocket, and that's a big piece. You look at some of these other teams, and they don't have two power backs that have top end and run physical and can pass protect and catch the ball to the backfield. Um, no, I mean, when 27's in the game or with fives in the game, the game plan doesn't change and the execution doesn't, isn't too much different either. Pack, I love, uh, before I know we got film session, Jamie, if I could just sneak one, yeah, one yeah. more in real quick. Yeah, um, yeah. your last year was 2010, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So you yeah, were no there way. for the infancy 
of what most, I think, Carolina fans would consider the best defensive run in school history. I mean, the talent alone, the fact that Stephon Kilmore is still playing in the NFL is just amazing to me. Yep. Um, I covered that kid's signing day. Uh, you know, Clowney, I mean, everybody knows all the names mm-hmm. and, and, and knows what they were able to do. You saw that up close. Yep. You're, you're pretty up close to what we're seeing here in 2024. Dare I ask you to compare and contrast a little bit? Yeah, I mean, shoot, you see all the traits. I mean, Dylan Stewart is like is an animal. I mean, and we're just seeing like the very start of it too, which is crazy. I mean, the way he bends, the way he plays with power, and he's still skinny and lanky at times. Like he he's not completely put together like he's going to be here in the next year or two. Um, I mean, he's freaky. Kennard is just a grown man. He puts his hand in your chest, and you can see tackles just like wince, like, oh, gosh, not again. Um, but, I mean, I would say the the coolest part about this group is it's, they're deep. I mean, we're playing five, six guys in the interior, too, on defense. There's four guys, Brian Thomas Jr. I mean, there's a bunch of guys that can rush the pass around the outside. Um, we got three to four linebackers that play a significant amount of time. Um you know, the two safeties, DQ and Nick, they've been in the system for a long time. OD's been here for like 10 years now, um, and he's still playing at an extremely high level. I mean, Judge was – like, Judge was the only one that didn't play much last year in that secondary, and he's come in and he's – you know, he locked down um, – he's locked down several number ones, uh, and he's played at an extremely high level. So, it's – it is crazy. I would say this team – probably has more depth than we had during my time and maybe a couple years after. Um, and, I mean, shoot what you're seeing with Kennard and T.J. Sanders. I mean, they both have first-round grades right now in the NFL. Um, you know, last time two guys got drafted in the first round from South Carolina was Melvin and Stephon Gilmore in 2011 um, or 2012, however you want to equate it. but. Um, I mean, it is a very, it's a really special group and, you know, kudos to Travian Robertson for, for kind of getting the dog out of them. Sterling Lucas. Uh, I mean, two guys that played kind of in my era, the younger generation of coaches that are probably able to relate to the players, uh, on a deeper level, uh, which I think there's something to that. If you're a player's coach, coach Beamer's done a great job with that too. So, um, no, this is, I mean, this defense, I don't know, statistically is probably better than some of those other defenses. Um, in some regards, but I mean, the crazy thing is, is Dylan Stewart's just scraping the surface of what he's going to become, which is scary. I'm glad I don't have to block him. <laughs> well, I don't think you could block it. Nobody else can block him, Pat. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, give me, come on, 10 years in the NFL, I can't block a freshman? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Think about Shane mentioned it before the year. He's like, we're going to play a lot of young guys. And he's that's proven to be true. Now they play a lot of old guys too, but they are playing a lot of young guys, and they're all expected to return. So, all right, um, let's get to the film room here, uh, Pat. We got some fun plays in here this week. A couple of interesting ones too, and uh, and always excited to get um, to get Pat's uh, take on, on these things. This is brought to you by our friends at Sony, who are paying us about ten thousand dollars a second to air this. Lenore Sellers here gets to. Uh, Nick Harbor. The reason this is in here is because it seemed like Nick Harbor had a, an instinctual wide receiver play here where Seller steps up and, and finds him. He struggled last week. He bounced back this week. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is an instance here where they're rushing three, so there's eight in coverage. There's there's not much. Like you gotta think. I mean, they're they're in blanket coverage, they're in a big cover three. Um, Nick does a great job when he sees Lenore's flee of finding the soft spot in the defense. And, I mean, that's not an easy catch. Fully extension over your head. Um, so it's cool to see, like, the strength of his hands going to get it. And then, man, when he caught this and I saw the green grass, I was like, we're about to see 9-8 or whatever he runs in a Go 100 back, across the field. But, um, you know, thankfully, I mean, this guy clipped his leg or else I think he was probably going to take it to the house across the other side of the field. But, you know, great ball skills, catching there, plucking and tucking. Um, and man, I mm-hmm. thought he was, I thought he was gone. Um, plucking and tucking is that a is that a term? I've never used that. Pluck that and tuck. Okay, eyes All right. catch. See your fingertips wrap around the football. 
Okay. All right. Well, there you go. I just, we all we we always learn something new when Pat DeMarco. There you go, Mike. Make sure you pluck and tuck before you go to bed tonight. I, I, um, sometimes I do that a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Second play <laughs> here in the film room is the touchdown. Road gets lonely, to guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to Josh Simon. That Beautiful is, play. What a catch. Yeah, I mean, great catch, great throw, great blitz pickup by Rocket Sanders. He's been running the ball great. Safety's blitz him from the middle of the field, and he freaking dumps him on his face. Um, but, no, the, I think the cool part here was Lenoris. Like, you see Josh, he's running a cover three seam, and he's staying, like, kind of right up the numbers, uh, right in the hat, right in the alley, right in between. Mm-mm. Uh-oh. There you go. We'll get him back. We're gonna have to cancel that Sony sponsorship. Yeah, they're not working out right now. Couple a couple of things here. We've got a <laughs> couple of fun things about this video while we get Pat back up. Number one, Mike, how about the cat that tried to go around Rocket Sanders? Yeah. Or above him. And Rocket held on to him yeah. before he released him. Rocket like was ready to put him in the old airplane spin. Remember that move in old in professional wrestling? You get him on your shoulders and you just keep going around and around and around. Look that's, at this guy. He's, he's, he's gonna put him in the airplane spin. His legs start twisted like oh shit. He's he's going Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorf on him. Oh my gosh. Uh, so I want wanted to make sure we pointed that out, and then we get to the end of this one here. The uh the the celebration is is by the way that he holding on to the football he got popped there yeah um but the celebration was uh was was just as good as anything here as Torricelli Simpkins decided to show him what the big man could do that was that's nice work I I know it's been said before by JC and others but I mean Joshua Simon that's a dude that, that I this offense owes a great debt of gratitude to him because we've talked about, you know, kind of the lack of a of an alpha wide out this year. But you got an alpha tight end and he has made a number of big plays this season. Yeah, you know, I I hate I really 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 don't want this to come off as told you so or anything like that. Uh I thought going into last season Josh Simon probably was the best tight end on the team above Trey Knox. Right. Um and like just liked everything about him. But he was weak when it came to actually doing what they needed him to do from on the perimeter from a blocking standpoint. He had to improve that. This year, you're either going to be the guy, or you're not going to be the guy, and um, and he's certainly become the guy. There's there, there's no doubt. So, um, why don't you break down the next play, Jamie? Go ahead. Yeah, and roll I know. It. Right? So, Jamie is looking through the eyes of a uh, former catcher. What did you think of uh, <laughs> this play? Yeah. Right I know. <laughs> Well, uh, I, um, Make it down. <laughs> they got, uh, I tell you what we'll do. Hey, Phil, this is, this is very unconventional. I can pull break that down one down. I can't, I can too. <laughs> pull, pull it down real quick. Yeah. I let's was going to say quick... that one's pretty easy. Guys, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, um, let's hit a quick timeout. Uh, we're going to, we're going to get Pat back up here during the timeouts. I want to make sure we get to these final couple. We get, and we got to take one anyway. So we'll get to a timeout. Morning, Carl. Usual. Yeah. Your oldest was in here the other day. Said the two of you took a trip down to my neck of the woods. How'd that go? You might as well give me one of those Carolina cars while you're at it. I knew I liked that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go, my friend. Thanks. Hey, Carl. Congratulations. Hmm. See you tomorrow, Freddy. You bet. We continue to honor all of those who have served and who are serving. It is Veterans Day. Welcome back inside the Gamecocks, the show. All right, we got Pat. Uh, we got him at least a little bit fixed up here. We'll get back into the the film room. This is number three, and this is the the play a lot of people are talking about. Pat Sellers under pressure, and he finds Jared Brown for fifty one yards. Yeah, I mean this is a another off schedule play. I, I feel like a lot of our big explosive passes are, are kind of coming off this, which is. Lenore does a great job of never going down, never giving up. Um, and for for some reason, I mean, this isn't like there's an art to like the scramble play. And I feel like we are very dialed in and on cue. I mean, Jared does a good job of kind of pressing in and then getting the guy in trail mode and breaking back out as soon as he sees Lenore break the pocket. 
in the north was a good job. I mean, rolling left and then throwing a 40-yard rocket uh, is not an easy task either. It is a good job of, of executing there. Um, but, no, I mean, as you can tell, this defensive end, um, you know, <laughs> basically is bear-hugging Lenore Sellers and still can't bring him down. So just goes to show his strength and grit and his determination and um, his willingness to make a play, put his body on the line. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, too. It looked like he could have probably stepped up there and run for a decent amount of yardage. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something they'll talk to him about or what. I mean, it worked out, obviously. It worked out. He got out of there, and Jared Brown got free. Um, But to your point, Pat, we have been seeing this more and more, and I I guess what I keep understanding is that that that's when you know it's really slowing down for this kid. He escapes. He's calm, cool, and collected, and he finds somebody downfield. Yeah, I mean, keeping your eye. I mean, that was what one of his best plays last year was the play against um, – was it against Vandy where he threw the 68-yard touchdown pass in the back right corner of the oh, end Oh, yeah. Zone. By Sean Russell. Yep. Yep. I mean, and that was another play where he could have kind of taken off and ran for 20 or 30 yards untouched, but he's, his eyes are downfield. He's ready to pull the trigger when he gets out of the pocket. We'll pull the trigger on number four here in our film room. Talking ball with Pat DeMarco. Rocket Sanders makes a guy miss. And he's gone. Yeah, simple tight zone scheme here. Um, now we're talking more of the run game, which is more my thing. Um, you know, the <laughs> left left guard and center here, kind of a uh, an ace block to the play side linebacker. The three technique kind of stays a three technique, and then the backer shoots the a gap. Um, poor safety. I mean, I think the guy closed his eyes when he's seven yards away from rocket. Like, oh god, please, 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 just trip and fall. Um, and unfortunately, or fortunately for the Gamecocks, um, Rocket did a really good jo- job of giving him kind of head and eyes and then breaking off. And what I've noticed with him is kind of Marcus Lattimore-esque is like the way he moves his upper body um, while he's running the football to kind of, one, protect the football, um, two, to like kind of maneuver his way. Like you see this guy kind of reach here and he tucks, tucks his shoulder, gets skinny. Um, he does a really good job of his body. Of, um, of of kind of just like easing through there does a good job of like just not creating much contact when not con- not much contact is needed. Guy's a freak, man. He is uh, uberly uberly talented. If he stays healthy, he's going to be in the NFL for a long time. There's a lot of teams this year who, uh, or at least in the last few weeks, that have seen the back of of Rocket Sanders yep. in that number five. They Pat, as we move into number five here. They continue to e- increase the number of touches for the best players on offense, Sellers, Sanders, Simon. That's been a winning strategy. Yeah. Uh, it's, you, you're usually best case scenario when your best players touch the ball a decent amount. Um, like here on the screen. <laughs> yep. I mean, and like his vision, like the way he sees it, he, uh, like – I think I told you guys, I talked to him. I went to a spring practice. Me and Connor were there, and we stayed afterwards, and I was talking to you guys. And he came up to me, and he's like, man, I didn't know you played in the NFL for as long as you did. Um, like, what, what what piece of advice would you give me? You know, I have, I have high aspirations to play in the NFL. Um, what was one, What was a key coaching point that helped you kind of elevate your game and change your game? And I told him, like, feel the first level, read the second level. Um and man, I think he's he's doing that. You see here when he catches this screen, he sets up his blocks with the offensive line. And you got to make got to make that easy for for the offensive line. You try not to, you know, if, when you catch these screens, if you go and dart out, out dart outside right away, these offensive linemen are never going to be able to catch these backers and, and DBs. So you kind of have to stem them up and take the take the defender to the block. And he does that here uh, to get good collision by his by his guard and center. You know, they're engaging right here. Boom. And then the rest is history. You kind of see. Can we give the wide receivers a little credit for the downfield blocking? Yeah, I was going to say he presses his box, gets up on the receivers. They cover their guys up. You know, in this in this instance, when, when it's when you're running a screen like this, if you're in man coverage, you're told to just run them off. So, like, what I would do is I would just run deep and I'd throw my hands up late and make the guy think that it's a jump ball. Um, to kind of disengage him. But if it's a big zone and you see the kind of corners or safety's anchor, then you got to square him up and base him up. And just like they did here, just get hands on him and let number five do something special with the ball. Phil, roll back real quick there, maybe five seconds. I just want to watch Torricelli Simpkins. Roll back a little bit beyond that. 
Okay, Simpkins here. There you go. You're good right there. So Simpkins. Oh wait, go back a little bit further. I'm sorry, Phil. That's that's on me, man. Uh, yeah, just run the play again. Simpkins basically follows Rocket downfield and just he throws that guy to the ground. This guy, and then he goes after the next guy. He took three guys out on the same play within about a 15, 20 yard span. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, which, so he is the. There's 70. He threw the guy down. He takes yeah. four, well, half of four, and then he takes this guy out. Yeah. No, I mean, he's the, I guess, he's the guard. So he's the first one out. So he's the alley defender. Um, him and Vershawn kind of team up here. So you're supposed to bait rush, bait rush, hands on, flash. And then the guy tries to dis tries to engage him, and he does a good job of tossing him. Yeah, he gets three guys in one play. Yeah, he gets three guys in one. I mean, boy, if you're Sean El or whoever the hell's coaching the mm -hmm. offensive line anymore, I don't even know. I mean, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be happy about that. All right, Pat, we got to get get your eyes on one more thing. We did we didn't have you. Um, go back to number three, Phil. Uh, go back to the third play here. Uh, Want to get your? We were talking about Rocket Sanders and just everything you're talking about vision and all these things that he can do. Uh, and one of the things that he did really, really well on the touchdown catch to, to Josh uh, Simon. Talking about the blitz pickup. Oh, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to skip over that. He did a good job. The safety came from the middle of the field and he put his, like, I think his helmet right in the, you know what, and freaking just smashed him into the ground, tried to put him six feet under. Well, uh, he shows him off like a trophy first here. So, yeah, okay. yeah I mean, I, like in this play, like obviously when you see a defender go to raise their hands up, obviously the like quarterback's directly behind Rocket. He doesn't know what's happening behind him. But when the defensive guy goes to put his hands up, he's trying to swap the ball. And you're told to engage them as fast as possible. As soon as their hands go up, you got to engage and get their hands down. And, I mean, he hit him right in the knees, <laughs> kind of flipped him. He was sitting on his back. And then you kind of see him. Like go to like hip toss him like a wrestling move and plant him in the ground. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is like this is NFL football. Like in college, I mean, I, I know backs do pass protect in college, but if you can't do this in the NFL, you're not going to play for very long. Um, so, and he's showing right now that you know he's willing and able to sit in there, stick his nose in there. We've seen him; he's already ran for a touchdown, he's already caught a touchdown, and here he is, like blitz pick up to the utmost here. So no, I mean, he's got a, he's got a bright, bright future. Hopefully my bills, hopefully my bills have a early enough pick to snag him. Oh, we'll, we'll put in a good word for him up there, up there in Buffalo. And then want, want to get your final thoughts here. Uh, just let this play out, Phil, if you don't mind, but want to certainly want to get your final thoughts on the uh, ball first placement here. It's, it's like, nice. this is the ball placement. Um, Perfect. I mean, it was, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a cover three. So you have the middle field safety and the two corners sinking. So this right here, what do you think about oh, this? Oh, Simpkins, 76. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. it's, it's a stuff. different age, different age of college football than it was 15 <laughs> years ago when I was playing. Um, you know, if I dance like that, everybody makes fun of like my beer belly. He dances like that, and it's 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 cool. You know, it's funny. Like, well, I, I I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and throw shade on you, but I've seen you try to do those moves at the Flint's condo before, and I wouldn't do them. I wouldn't do not, them. Not a good time. look. Yeah. Hey, Pat. Uh, uh, Cam asked a good question on uh, chat, bro. How far can linemen be downfield before it's an eligible receiver? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In college, it's it's three yards. So pro yeah. rule is a little bit tighter, right? Yeah, pro rule, I think it's like a yard and a half. Uh, yeah. I, know I got called a few times yesterday in a couple of NFL games where it was – I mean, that's just one of the stickler rules that they have in the NFL right now is because some of these teams are doing the RPO action stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, college is three. It used to be five. I want to say two or three years ago it was five where you can almost get away with murder. You could almost run the ball. <laughs> still right. If, uh, if Nick Saban had his way, it would be zero. He, he would complain about that the moment RPOs started coming into play. He did not like that rule at all. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it makes sense. I mean, the ball sits in the sits in the running back's stomach until he's dang near at the line of scrimmage, and you can just pop it out and pull it. And not to mention, your eyes are so distracted as the you know as a linebacker safety of seeing these guys climb up to you and in the run game. And then you get in panic mode and try to panic drop and you just completely lose track of where you are. Pat, before we let you run here, I want to get your your final thoughts on 
the game that's going to be played this weekend, Missouri and South Carolina. Game, game Gamecocks right now are on a five-game losing streak to Missouri. They have not beaten them since that rainy game uh, where Michael Skarnecki, a quarterback to Carolina, to a two-point oh, win yeah. in 2018. That was part of a three-game uh, winning streak. And then since then, it has been no bueno. And outside of one or two games, it really hadn't been that close. Uh, Missouri pounded them last year. Um, this thing's got to come to an end. You know, yeah. Um, I mean, I love, um, was it Eli Drinkowitz as a head coach? I love like kind of his offense. Like he does a really good job. I mean, it's very NFL esque. It's wide zone, play pass, keeper game, uh, gets in the gun, runs some duo, counter. Um, he's very run heavy. I mean, that running back they had last year was a stud. I mean, he was there for what, two or three years. Um, quarterback's been there. Is the quarterback healthy? I saw he got hurt earlier in the he, year. Is he, back he is playing? not. I don't think he's going to play this weekend either. I think he's going to be out yeah. again. That's why the line is where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, if, if he's playing or any quarterback's playing, they got to deal with the monsters we have up front. So, um, yeah. I almost wish he was playing because I still think Carolina is a better team and I still like the matchup. And did, did we just scare off Pat again? His internet dropped out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, a part of me is like, go ahead and. Have him play because I I still think this offense is going to struggle against that D. But there you go, Pat. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, our company internet's not been not been great today. But uh, no, I, I mean, I think as long as we continue to stay the course, play good defense, don't turn the ball over. Um, you know, comp- continue to lean on our horses, Rocket Sanders, Josh Simon, Lenore Sellers, and then kind of continue to get those other guys involved: Jared Brown, Nick Harbor, Oscar Attaway, Michael Thomas. Um, Gage, I mean, we have weapons. We just haven't necessarily featured them as much. So, um, what do they say? When your number's called, you better answer. Um, so, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that these guys, when they're itching to get their opportunity because they haven't been had many. Uh, so, no, I'll be there loud and proud. Um, after I get a W in the uh, Letterman's Golf Tournament, I'll be bringing some hardware, be drinking out of a nice little fancy new cup, um, hopefully. Um We'll see, but um, no, got uh, Flint's coming up and Brent Nice is coming up. Garcia just canceled on us because his son uh, is uh, his son's playing uh, first round of oh, playoffs yeah. this Friday night. So Sweet. I said, I said you have a great you have a great excuse not to. So cheer me up, Colin. Did you take uh, any money off him on uh, cut? No, you know I'm not a big sports better. Like I'll I'll gamble on the golf course and I'll gamble playing cards. Yeah, um, but I'm not a big sports. Player. Okay, um, just uh, and nothing against it. Um, I just it, it would frustrate me too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, think any, anything frustrates Garcia. I, I wish I had that guy's spirit animal. I know one thing that frustrates him, but I'm we're not going to do that. It's over. It's over now. Right. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I my my daughter Hannah. I finally just beat her and go fish the other day. This is her first loss in six months. I'm not kidding. It's not like we let her win either. She wins every game. I can't figure it out, but she lost on Friday. I, Got her. Good job, Jamie. I'm proud nice, of you. Nice triumph, Jamie. Father yeah. of the year. I rubbed it in her face. And Way to beat that six-year-old in a card game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Pat mentioned he bet on cards. I'm like, I don't know that I bet against Hannah and go fish. But, <laughs> hey, we all have one moment, right? I had my one moment. Did you take um, her deep in wiffle ball, too, in the old backyard? Did you oh, the yeah. home run when you uh, – This was – yeah, I spiked the football. There's no doubt. <laughs> I mean, this was, it was, I'd had enough of that. Take the wins where you can. <laughs> uh, Pat, we'll let you run on that note, man. Uh, look forward to seeing you. You'll probably win on Friday.